The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hello everyone, Basil Chapman. Yeah, this is the Tiger Technicians Hour. My service here also is the opening call daily newsletter. We've had some real nice trades in different indices and a couple of stuff. So what we're looking at here is, within the context of the markets, that action on Friday with a little tiny doji candle, I was very disappointed. Besides using up too much time going sideways in a cup formation and a, a little miniature cup formation within that, I wanted to see a close at the high of the day. I didn't want to see the selling that kept coming in. Yes, it held well. It didn't do anything terrible. It just wasn't good enough. And that said to me that Monday could be a little difficult. But by Tuesday, Wednesday, we should see the bias again to the upside. Day is young. Could be wrong. I was asked about the UVXY, which is really a nice tell on the market. UVXY at this particular point is trading at 13.37. This is the um, ProShares Ultra VIX. Uh, short, uh, is it called the index? Short, VIX, short something. All right, let me just see what it is called officially. Uh, there we go. Okay, it's called uh, term. <laughs> That's it, the short term index, I guess. And really what's important about this, and this is going to be quite important as well in terms of what we're looking for. And I just wanted to say that... <sighs> I like what I'm seeing, but at the same time, I, I need to also be a little careful. I don't want to, I don't want to overdo um, going long for my subscribers. We've got really nice positions, taking profits, nice, good percentage profits on the short term. But most importantly, what I am looking at here is that if you look at the 10 minute uh, this is the ESU22, this is the 10 minute E mini. You can see that this big arch formation, first of all, within a rectangle formation, let me just get this right here. Okay, here we go. We've been in a rectangle formation for quite some time, since about uh, 7, that's on the 10th, that's yesterday in the evening, since the high of about 30, just under 3,900, and then we went down to 38.66, and then we were stuck in range. But there was an arch formation. The arch formation tested the left side low of 2 o'clock this morning, around about 38.65, took it right out uh, three bars ago, that's four bars ago, that's the 10-minute bar. And now look what it's doing. It's just attempting, the MACD is improving just a fraction. The stochastic is improving just a little. It went from under 20% under now to 16%. Uh, and uh, a couple of things are saying that there should be an attempt to get to the 38.65 level uh, within the next hour. If it's able to hold that and then break above 38.68, which is the 14-period moving average after that pink 9-period moving average, that'll be even better. But it's going to be a, an attempt, and there's no real leadership. Ah, I shouldn't say there's no real leadership. The IBB, that's the um, IBB. Let me just move there right now. That's the NASDAQ Biotech ETF, IBB, there we are, um, is doing very nicely. It is getting that peak B we thought that it would do today. The low today so far is 124.42. We'll see what happens here because this is great. And the little micro, I showed this to my subscribers over the weekend, um, the micro bio, biotech area is just on fire. They are doing fantastic. That's a little under, under $10 stocks. All right. Now let's get back to our story. So we're looking at the S&P. The S&P is down 43 at 38.55. Here again, uh, one day red. Yeah, that's fine after one, two, three, four, five days of green. But it's just, it's the pattern that says until there is a move into the 4,005 area, uh, it's kind of stuck. And I suspect this week there should be an, at least an attempt. And if you're looking at the very short term, I had a question about that. Let's do it since it's most timely. Yes, this is a peak A, and I suspect we're going to go to a peak B in the one-minute chart. And if we can get to, we're at 38.62 right now. If we can get to 38.68 to 38.71, and the just time is involved, by 10.30 this morning, 
Then there's a chance of hitting the 200 period moving average of 38.74, where we were back at 9.30, 9.33. So that's a, it's a long, ta long, uh, a long ask because it means that a lot of things have to go right. But that's kind of the pattern that I've been looking at since the MACD is improving, etc. All right, that and certainly support at 38.55, 38.52 is really important to hold. All right, let's get back to our story. The QQQ NDX 100 had very nice action. Uh, pulling back today, certainly from the high of, of Friday, which was at 296.75, the low today is at 288.14. Uh, That's a pretty big uh, pullback because it's taken out almost two days' worth of upside action. But I suspect that this is a well-earned digestive phase and that we should go, I should mention, we're also along the queues. Uh, this should go to an, another leg to the upside or extend this one if it's today above the 296.75 level. Maybe that's a big ask for the day. But I suspect by Tuesday, Wednesday, we will try to attempt that. That's my thinking here. And that's the reason why I think the UVXY is actually not that great. A question came in, and I'll do it right now because it was the same question Friday, and I think I forgot to do it. Queb, Crane Shares, CSI, China Internet, ETF, trading down 2.03 at 30.07, is alternating between the cup formation just above. You remember the cup formation? You can have a rally that goes to just under, right on or just over the previous high of the flagpole. That's at 34.12. Uh, that is peak D, around about the, eight, about the ninth or so of uh, June. And then it pulled back sharply, and then it went stair step, peak A, pulled back a little bit, peak B, pulled back a little bit, leg E slash C, because it went above the 34.12 area just by a fraction, it went to 34.36, and now it's trading at 30.05. And you remember, my contention has been for a while, yes, the Japanese stocks were doing pretty well. In fact, percentage-wise, they did fantastically off the lows. But why would you be messing around with the with I said Japanese I mean Chinese stocks? Why would you be messing around with the Chinese stocks? We've got enough trouble here with our stocks. Why would you go to another country? And I, that's and you can see that right now. Big pullback, sudden pullback, and that's the same with what was the question? Yeah, oh, with Baba. B A B A Alibaba. Look at that pullback. Same thing. It had the rectangle formation with slightly above the previous. High. Actually, a little bit more than slightly. 120, 121.06 uh, was the high on the 8th of June. It pulls back pretty sharply, just under 100 to about 96. I think it was 97.58. Then peak A, peak B, peak C. And then a peak D right at the 200 period exponential moving average, having quite a bit of a dip today taking out about a week's worth of upside action. But that's what you can expect at a peak D. Look what happened at the last peak D. And there again. But this one is within a rectangle formation. I think it's going to find support in the, between 109 and 107, maybe 105, but in that. And then it could rally again. But I think it's now, at least in the shorter term, it's stuck in this rectangle formation. So just I'm just going to say be a little careful here. Um, okay, that's that was uh, Alibaba B A B A trading at 110.72, down 10.2. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's almost 9% on the day. That's a big recap. Yeah. All right, folks, we'll be back. Basel chapter. Thank you. Conditions are very selective. Upside action. Uh, we've been playing it very selectively, and I think you have to stay that way. Be as precise as you can, and put it stop. Don't pick the small losses dumping losses. And same with the gains. I'll be back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello everyone, we're back. Basil Chapman. Now the XLF, the financials, down 09 at 31.99. This is not good. I, I've spoken about this for some time and when the financials the xlf uh, s p select financial spider fund could not rally when yields were going so much higher uh and now when the yields are kind of stuck in a sideways move actually occasionally going even lower this is going to be tough and i think earnings are coming up this particular week and that's what i mean by uh selective and that's also what i meant by Looking out in the big picture, I don't think that we're kind of done yet with the whole consolidation. We need, we need a couple of real good smacks to the downside to really test strength. So within that context, the XLF, until the XLF is trading, can't just hit it, until the X is actually trading above 3380, 3420, that's the resistance area that I'm looking at. This is going to be tough because you really want to see the financials Bank of America, even BRK.B, which is uh, Buffett's uh, Berkshire Hathaway, which is in, which is in the uh, BRK.B, which is in the uh, XLF, uh, because they're involved in so many aspects of the financials, um, they own banks, etc. But most importantly, this is going to be, uh, look, it almost looks like the XLF. In miniature. So what we're looking at 279 down 92 cents is that within the the Eiffel Tower formation that's an uppercase A straight up and straight down we went to a lower low and now we're struggling really to get to, to garner energy to get back to the 280s. So that's another important thing. We can go JP Morgan. There are a lot of people that ask me about going to look at JP Morgan. You know I don't see JP Morgan. It's acted very poorly. It's made a high up in the 170s. Uh, it went made a low just under 110, and now it's at 130. It's really struggling. That weekly chart needs a lot. In fact, the weekly chart until it gets to 129, 131 is saying, um, <laughs> I don't see anything there. Uh, we, and that's kind of important at this particular stage. I, I want you to do a question came in about, not a question, a statement saying that the, the uh, steels are acting quite nicely today. Well, the SLX, which is the uh, steel ETF, it is the Van Eck 
steel ETF is trading down 53 cents at 48.49, made a low four days ago. It was once upon a time at 70.43 back in April, and then it plunged down to the uh, 46 level. So, I mean, that's a huge hit, was at about 42%. Now what we're looking at is, within the context of the steels, this is not a very good pattern. Yes, you could get a bit of a pop today. Look at that a pop on the on, on U.S. steel up 31 cents in 1793. Not really a great pattern. Uh, you, uh, uh, why am I looking at you? N, uh, N, U core. That's a new core. N U E. Same thing. Nice pop today up to 80 at 111.81. And CLF, which is the um, steel, this, this is the flat roll steel, and iron ore pellets, uh, Cleveland Cliffs, are also nice. But these are not great chart patterns at all. And that's why I said to my subscribers, I'm opening call, we're going to be very cautious today. We want to be buying something that's acted extremely well on a sharp dip. It's getting close to that area, and then we would start a position. It's in all this particular daily chart is in leg B. I think it can still go to a C and a D, but I'm becoming, after Friday's action, which should, there was no real economic or news-related uh, situation that said there shouldn't have been at least a close towards the highs rather than selling most of the day. I'm, I'm a little bit more cautious, even though we are long and we are long even indices. So that's just saying to me, that's okay. You've had a very good trade. You've raised your stops. Uh, for now, that's that's not a bad uh, situation. But keep an eye on everything that's going on. I did not go short. I, mean, I was about to put it in as a, just to say, look, at this particular point, after this number of days of attempting to rally and failing, I might have to reinstitute some kind of short position in one of the indices. But actually, I, I held off. I, I just, I think there's still some kind of an upside bias. I'm going to try to keep it that way. Let's go to um, high-grade copper. High-grade copper is trading uh, down today quite sharply at 3.39, uh, down 12 ticks. You're looking at um, wheat, dust wheat is trading at a great session between four sessions. It went from a doji candle four days ago all the way to today's high of this is the continuous contract of 940 and a quarter. But I didn't really see um, the kind of strength that I would like to see in the commodities at this particular point uh, to say that the DBA, which we are long, which is the DBA Agricultural Fund, along from the 13s two years ago, taking profits off all the way to the 23s. But at this particular point, I don't really want to add back some of what we took off. I, I'm thinking about it. I, I'm thinking also that the commodities, look, let's go through soybeans. Look, soybean, a nice move off the 200-period exponential moving average, but it did dip under in the rectangle formation. I have to move this down because the numbers keep changing. This gets smoothed out as a continuous contract. So the letters you see are absolutely correct, except for one little thing. Now, why did I put that? Oh, CD. Okay, let me just move that down so you know what I'm talking about. Um, it gets smoothed out. So the price changes, but not the pattern, not the labeling, not the chapter wave notation, nothing. And therefore, that is a peak E and it's pulled back and it went underneath the rectangle support. And that's saying together with Khan, Khan also did the same thing, made a peak D in the weekly chart and pulled back very sharply, hit the 200 period moving average, very strong. This is a little stronger. So the, within the commodities, I'm looking at them saying there are hints that the commodities are attempting to find some kind of a, a base. And in the next, by Friday, by this coming Friday, if they make higher highs than they did, say, today, that's going to be really important. So we've got a week in which to see whether or not the commodities are back in action, because if you put them together with crude oil, crude oil has had a very nice bounce off the low, but still in the lower range. At 121.46 was the continuous contract high back in mid-June at the peak in the Chapman wave. They did the arch formation, didn't take out the left side low. That gives you room to bounce, which is done. And now it's giving some of that back at the pink moving, a nine-period moving average, and it hasn't got to the black 14-period moving average. So I'm watching uh, crude oil very closely. If you put it together with heating oil, and yeah, we are in the summertime, heating oil has had a little bit of a bounce today, 3.72. 
but it's the same kind of pattern. I think it's going to go sideways for a little while, be in a, be in a trading range. Look at the U.S. bonds. That peak D that was made last week um, at about 140 in the 142s, went down to the 136s, and now you're at 138.25, uh, 30 seconds. And that's just telling you that if you put it together with the TNX.X, that's the 10-year yield, um, you can see the peak D as well. It pulls back sharply, trying to rally, and that just says that yields are stuck in the higher range. Do they make a new uh, multi-year high? Well, we'll see, because that 10-year had a high of 32.48 uh, back in October of 2018, and in December of 2013, it had a high of 30.36. So, uh, in the range of 30, that's about 60. I'll be back in a moment. Bows of crap, it's like a star. Let me take the whole gap. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So uh, at this particular point, that E-mini hasn't broken out yet. It's attempting to a couple of times. It's really, really struggling. And when you look at something struggling, you just say, oh, wow, you've got a lot of work to make up. So 124.05 was a high on Friday of a Zoom video. ZM is trading out 110.78, down 9, uh, down 7.5%. Congratulations. Uh, what, did, what did I see? Uh, uh, Basil, can you post ZM? When you get a chance, thank you. I closed my position last week. Congratulations. Very nice trade. And you have to treat this as trades. At some point, they're really going to pick up and go on a strength. But at that point, I don't know if it's here. I mean, look, 79 to 124. That's uh, 45 points. That's that's uh, it's almost a 50 percent gain. Actually, what am I saying? It's more than a 50 percent gain. It's about a 55 percent gain. 
in just a matter of a few weeks, uh, maybe a month. Yeah, it deserves a rest, uh, Zoom. Um, let's see, question came up here. Uh, let's see, CFRX, CFRX, this is what RX means is in the medical area. Uh, trading at 3.15, down 20, uh, up 20 cents. It was all the way down to 2.42 this morning. Announced rebounded. A microbio with big data expected this week. Do you think this was a big shakeout this morning? Huge option premiums is if you're a put seller. You know, if you're a put seller, what you what you absolutely want to do, you want this to push. Today's high was 337. It opened at 242. The low was 242. I mean, if ever there was a trap, that was it. That's for the uh, shorts. I don't know who who'd be shorting, but maybe using puts and, uh, and calls, etc. That's where the action is. But this is the way I'm looking at it. The weekly chart has gone to a peak A, B, C, and actually it went to a D right there, squeaked to a D, and now it's pulled back. Remember the Chapman methodology? The objective is to get to at least a buy signal to buy mode to take you to um, four higher peaks. That's peak D. And then anything can happen. Well, certainly anything can happen from 450 down to today's low of 242. Wouldn't you say that that's almost a 50% decline in just a matter of four days in a week? So this is really important. What I... There's a lot of shaking and rattling and rolling going on here in CFRX. And CFRX stands for, uh, I didn't type that in, com, 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 oh, oh am I going to read this? I don't know why they put that gray background. Uh, Contrafact Corporation. Contrafact. Contra something. So I'm going to do this I'm going to, because it looks very interesting and it's a great question. So what does CFRX stock do? And there it is. Um, uh, there it is. There it is. Uh, 306. Uh, if I remember, it comes in. Contract quote, contract quote, contract quote, stock forecast, company. Oh, man. Jeez. It gives you everything else but what they do. Uh, nine value investing contra oh contrafact corporation academia lab academia lab it is all right country trades uh, you're probably t typing and writing what, what it does right now um, no you're not okay so I'm trying to find out what it is so it's called contrafact course I'll just change that to contrafact core do and it'll tell me right here it says biotechnology company focus on discovering and developing biologic something or other okay so we know that it's in a specific area of the biotech clinical stage biotechnology company great okay so uh, within that context I would just say that the speed with which it bounced back today is a little bit a little bit troubling it's a little too obvious, and I wouldn't be surprised if at 307 right now, there's a test of the 290s. If at today it's right now 10:34 a.m. Eastern Time, if by 12, if by 12:33, I want it after the mid-session lunchtime. If by 12:33, CFRX instead of trading under 290. Is actually trading above 318. That's not a big ask because the high today is already 337. But it can get to 318 and holding, then there's a chance that it closes towards the high of the day. If it does close at the high of the day, tomorrow's action shouldn't be what I was saying is a possibility today going into the 12:30 time where it suddenly pulls back a little bit sharper because the speed with which it just wiped out everyone. Who was on the wrong side when it went down to 242 this morning and now it's trading, I mean, since the 20 something percent higher uh, at 305. That is uh, usually the people who didn't have a chance to do whatever it is, they want a second chance. So if tomorrow, regardless of whether it tra uh, trades at the end of the day, and I'm saying if it trades over 318, it should be a decent start to the open, there's a chance that you've raised the stop. 
you've raised the support level to the 305 to 98 level. That's kind of the way I would look at it. And of course, this is all speculation on something that is a biotech. Any, I don't even know what the news is. It could be anything. But most importantly, just action, stock action that I've watched before using experience, and that's about it. So let's see what happens there. But in the meantime, at any time this week, if 242 is taken out, oh, I'd just be really careful of the stock. The why? Because it says that they're just a whole new bunch of sellers. And so just make it as simple as possible. Right now, the bias is to say it should try to get to the 315 level, the nine period exponential moving average. I would prefer to see it over 318, and that would be very important. All right, a couple of questions came in. Could you do a little bit of short term analysis for some of us who are day trading? Okay, if you're day trading, you made a trough C1 and a trough C2. And now the nine period for the very first time since it broke down at 9.38 this morning under 3.861, uh, this is the first time that the nine period moving average is moving positively, going green. And that just says that if there is a trade at 3.867.75 in the next five minutes, then by the time the show finishes today at 11 o'clock, there should be a test of the 3872 200-period exponential moving average in the cup formation. And just make it as simple as that. If there's a break underneath the low today of, um, I'd even say under 3851, that's not good. That's not good at all. That, that is really poor action, right? Uh, yeah, we go. Okay. Now, within that context, I just wanted to uh, show quickly the 10-minute chart. That was a one-minute, uh, sorry, the two-minute e-mini. The 10-minute the e-mini is working very hard at seeing the histogram improve a little bit. That's the vertical, the 0% line of the MACD. Stochastic has come off single digits. Uh, no, it's actually at 21%. It didn't go to single digits. That's important. And the on-balance volume is attempting to rally. So far, this is a, a positive for the uh, shorter term to say, oh, there it is, that the one-minute chart now, that was a two-minute chart. Should start to make an A, B. That should be a leg. It's already in leg C. Remember, this is peak A. That's peak B. When it pulled back, it didn't take out the left side low. So you've got to count each. Your objective in the Chapman wave is always to count each excessively higher peak and higher trough. And here we are. This is the first time that I'm seeing the type of action that says, now there could be a rally. I'll just draw this during the break. So you take, you take a particular point in the Chapman wave methodology, and you say, that's now your Chapman inside wedge target resistance line. I'll do all the colors and everything when we get back. And I'll say, where does it say it should go to? And then I'll give you a price line match. Left side, right side. Up. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, thank you, Pat, for the information on, on Front Effect uh, Corporation. Uh, Kevin Critical clinical stage biotech company discovers and develops a therapeutic protein, antibody protection pr products for the treatment of life-threatening and drug-resistant infectious diseases. And then for Dan in the den saying, uh, uh, play, playing with options, they're waiting for the DSMB recommendation from a phase three um, MRSA trial. Okay, very good. So a couple of things going on here. Oh, I said I'd show you this. Let me see. Yeah, we did. did we do anything here? Yeah, it's gone to a leg. This is in the uh, two-minute chart. It's gone to a leg. C. it needs to do much more. It's in the chapter wave. It stopped dead at the resistance level. And you want to see 38.72 by. I'll give you a time even by without breaking under, I'd say without breaking under 386, 38, 386.1. Oh, I'd say by 10.54, as the show's ending, we want to see some spike into that area to get above that ugly candle of about 9.33 this morning. A uh, question came in, so you asked uh, EEM, e question came in about the EEM. Let me just do this right here. EEM is the Emerging Markets Index. It's the same sort of thing that I said about the uh, Chinese, except theirs, their rally went to a peak D, uh, and then plunged, and now we're testing the left side low of the 15th, the 12th of May of uh, 38.95. The low today is 38.86. So that's really not great. And what's really important about this is that every failure has gone to a lower low in this dreaded H pattern. So EEM, I, I just suggest there are other things to do, right, play, rather than the EEM. It's just, it's a little too dangerous as far as I'm concerned. Uh, next thing that I was looking at, oh, where was it? Over here, over here, over here. Yeah, so could I look at, uh, I'm going to go straight to, I was looking at 64 to go long. Uh, long what? Uh, I missed that, uh, GM. Uh, GM, yep, okay, let's look at GM. Now, I was going to discuss some of the um, auto companies this morning, and uh, over the weekend I said, let's have a look at them, and I thought, you know, I just don't see anything right now. There's a lot, I mean, there's interest rates, there's, uh, there's a shortage of cars, people have to pay top dollar for whatever they want because there's so few cars, and look, General Motors, at, uh, are you looking at General Motors? You did say GM, or was that good morning? Um, so Bowser looking at 64 to go long, 64, to, oh, the ES, oh, sorry, okay, yeah, I, I agree with you that um, you you want a bit more conviction to the upside, so if you got, you've just got 64, if you got long, 64 is trading at 80, uh, uh, you said 64, it's trading at 66 right now, it should go to a leg D, that's all I'm looking at, and then we'll have to decide what it's going to do, but everything so far is in place for a buy signal that should go, that's in a buy mode that should go to D. So, all right, so I, I'm not going to waste time on the, on, on, the, on the automobile companies other than to say 
and Ford are just, they don't look good at all. But one that has intrigued me, but because it's a Chinese company, I haven't done anything about it. BYDDF, this is buy or bid company, H shares, this is a Chinese electric car company. They made a, a, a high back at 4361 uh, on the 28th of uh, June. It opened with around number 41. And now it's down at 38.75. I'm watching this one. If I'm going to go Chinese, I want Chinese where I feel that there's less likely to be some kind of enforcement of some crazy law that just knocks everything for a loop. And uh, this is a company they need. They need the, the electric vehicle. In fact, I think they would prefer to have this get even better than to have Tesla around. This is just my own personal opinion. And Tesla's down 30 at 721, stuck in this range that I said could be the lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m formation uh, that is right there. See a lowercase h with a lowercase m. It hasn't taken out the high. When it does close sharply above the high of the 2nd of June, which was at 792.63, that's going to be a positive and will take 831 is the 200 period exponential moving average target. So this little, uh, the the E uh, the E mini right now has gone to a peak C and has pulled back. I don't like that. See, this is the, the, the action we're watching even today is a little bit like Friday in that although it doesn't, once it's got that sharp initial sell off, it's not continuing to go lower, but it isn't allowing rallies to hold. And that's my big concern here that there's a kind of a holding pattern because it's earnings week. And you've got, I showed you the XLF, I think, I think don't uh, earnings start off with the financials. And that just says to me, there's a lot to worry about. The reason I suspect CCP has chosen bid as the entrance to the world EV market. Have a pint on this before. Oh, okay, I, I missed that CCP. I'm not sure what that is. Um, yeah, so that's what, what bid. BID is still, um, I think it's going to hold well. And that's the way I'm looking at it. So forget about our our local, our okay, our our General Motors and Fords, etc. I just don't think they, they're going to be there. This, but even Tesla, I think I've said Tesla to me is a stuck stock, and that uh, Twitter was an issue, but now Twitter is maybe not an issue. But the most important thing is that when a director gets or a CEO gets bamboozled because they're involved in something that they've never been in before. Um, it just detracts from the major thing. We saw that with CRM, salesforce.com. Look how that one's just stuck in a range. Uh, CRM is trading right now at uh, 173.83. Look, can't get out of its own way. It was a leader in the uh, cloud computing area. 311.25 was the high. Uh, November of last year, slumps it's cut in half to 154 and now it's can't get out of it had a fabulous 40 point rally to 192 at peak c then it failed and now it's just kind of stuck and that's the reason why i'm saying be very specific about what you want tighten up your stop make absolutely sure that um you know what you can lose you know what uh, yeah, larry and others say here know what you can lose it's not so much how much you can gain, because if you're in the, in the right area, obviously you will gain. So now there's uh, two other things that I want you to look at here. I wrote it down, wrote it down. Yes. SMHs, semiconductors, had a really nice full green candles with a gap up going into Friday's high. But now it's down a little bit, down four at 204.69. I think that the chip, from everything I can read, everything I can understand about the chip situation, is that there's been a slow buildup in some areas of specific types of chips. Not overall, but eventually comes the beginning or second quarter of next year. I think there'll be a chip glut. Will that lead to the sales? Incredible, terrible profits for the semiconductors, but fantastic sales for the autos, etc. I don't know, because the semiconductors as an index are usually, for me, it's a benchmark. They lead markets up and down and up and down. And when they fail to make new highs when everything else is, uh, that's something you watch. And when they make lows, uh, when the others are also making it, that's something to respect. So at 204, any time this month in July, it doesn't have to be on a week. I prefer it on a weekly basis. But even just an intraday pop to the 50-period moving average in the low 220s, 
That's a 10% move to the upside from here. I don't know what can do it. But if that happens, I'm saying to myself, nice. That's the first time we've seen some leadership in a couple of weeks. And can that be sustained? And I don't know if it can, because it's a tough area. I'll be back in a moment. Uh, Dow is down 120, not too bad. SP is down 36, not too bad. I'll be back. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So, folks, a lot of what I've been reading over the last six months doesn't necessarily have chart verification. In other words, you read about all the jobs that are available and so few people are out there looking for jobs. But look at this. This is RHI, Robert Half. Uh, Inc. International. This is a job search place. Uh, it makes a peak F in the monthly chart at uh, 125.77 in February, when the general markets had been topping, January, February. And look at this. It comes down very sharply. It gets to the uh, 72 level. And that, of course, is a huge decline. And even here, it's just got a bit of a bounce. It's not doing that much. And that just says to me, that there's something going on here within the general economy that is so specific that you can tell if you're looking at, say, a Sintas, one of the th one of the uh, stocks that we look at, overalls, uniforms, and rentals, just as a kind of a guide, it's holding okay. It's in within the 461 high, double top high back in December, down to the 340s low, 
And here it is at 382 is kind of in, the, in not quite the middle of the range, but it's in the uh, one third off the bottom. And it's holding okay, but it's not doing great. So that says there is, I've called this a rolling recession for a long time. If you're in, a, in any index, steel or whatever, that's gone down 20, 30, 40%, um, you're in a recession. You don't have to have the title recession uh, you know, out there by economists or, or the uh, administration. It's there already. And that's the reason why I'm saying let's be very careful in specific areas. If it works, wonderful. But we keep taking profits and then we just, if we get out and we stop out, we stop out. If it's still holding, it's holding. That's the way it is. Look at the dollar. The dollar makes a new, uh, I'll take your high today at 108.11. But the UUP, we've just finally we've taken a little bit more off today in the UUP, which is the dollar bull index. And that's not that's just money management because this is spectacular for the upside. But you still have to say to yourself, wow. Up, up, up.